एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू द लेक्चर सीरीज सेशन ऑफ ओवरव्यू एंड इंटीग्रेशन ऑफ सेल्युलर मेटाबॉलिज्म टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट फैटी एसिड कैटाबॉलिज्म मेनली द ऑक्सीडेशन ऑफ फैटी एसिड्स सो इन दिस सेशन इन द डिस्कशंस ऑफ फैटी एसिड ऑक्सीडेशन वाट वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस आर how mobilization of the stored fat occurs finally that stored fat is actually utilized for uh, different types of oxidation so we are going to discuss different types of fatty acid oxidation then obviously we are going to highlight beta oxidation of fatty acid where we will discuss how activation of fatty acids occurs how those are transported and finally how the main uh, reaction series of beta oxidation occurs in case of even chain fatty acid as well as odd chain fatty acids then we will have a comparative discussion of beta oxidation between saturated and unsaturated fatty acid we will discuss different uh, i mean the bioenergetics of uh, beta oxidation then the metabolic regulation and finally diseases associated with beta oxidation and then we will proceed to different other types of fatty acid oxidations like alpha oxidation omega oxidation uh, peroxisomal oxidation of fatty acids like that so mobilization of stored fat occurs from the storage depot of lipids and neutral lipids are stored in adipocytes adipocytes of the fat storing organs like uh, adrenal cortex the steroid synthesizing cells of adrenal cortex as well as the sex steroid uh, sex hormone which are steroid hormone actually which are produced from ovary and testes these are the tissues or organs where uh, neutral lipids are stored in the form of adiposomes now what is adiposome definitely adiposomes are uh, lipid droplets actually so lipid droplets where in the central core there are lipids more more uh, hydro phobic lipids like steroid sterol esters triacylglycerol these are forming the cores and this core is surrounded by a mono layer of amphipathic lipid that is phospholipid now uh, this core uh, lipid droplet is surrounded by a surface protein which is known as perilipin now perilipin has one very important role in mobilization of stored fat now uh, this mobilization from the storage or uh, storage tissues mostly occurs through some hormonal signal signals when there is uh, depletion of the uh, ready made energy supplier that is glucose or carbohydrate products when those stores are depleted that gives a signal basically low blood glucose actually gives a signal via hormones like epinephrine and glucagon these hormones used in mobilization of storage of lip stored lipids and they come uh, they come out from these adiposomes so uh, this mobilization basically occurs as i dis told that it is uh, the signal comes from epinephrine and glucagon hormones now what does epinephrine and glucagon do they actually uh, activate the enzyme adenylyl cyclase now this adenylyl cyclase what it does it converts atp to cyclic amp via g protein coupled receptor now the cyclic amp if you remember from the previous classes that the cyclic amp activates cyclic amp dependent protein kinase a now this protein kinase a is important for phosphorylation of different proteins enzymes like that so one such important protein here is perilipin which was forming the uh, surface of adiposomes now this perilipins via protein kinase a is phosphorylated in different regions so there is phosphorylation of perilipin now there is another hormone that is hormone sensitive lipase now hormone sensitive lipase definitely lipase enzyme is actually breaking down triacylglycerol to glycerol and fatty acids now hormone sensitive lipase here is also phosphorylated and activated by protein kinase a so once hormone sensitive lipase is phosphorylated it is definitely uh, 
uh, is uh, definitely is targeting for uh, targeted for uh, breaking down the stored triacylglycerol in the adiposome. Now, important thing is perilipins are the proteins which actually separate the adiposomes or rather it prevents the access to the core triacylglycerols in uh, conditions when the breakdown is not required. Now, when perilipin is phosphorylated, it basically attracts the hormone sensitive lipase and it causes the movement of hormone sensitive lipase over the uh, or towards the adiposomes. Now, basically hormone sensitive lipase is attached to the membranes of adiposome where the enzyme is activated and actually breaking down the triacyl core of adiposomes. Now, remember uh, for mobilization of fat or rather breakdown of stored triacylglycerol both required. One is perilipin phosphorylation, another is activation of hormone sensitive lipase by phosphorylation. But remember only activation of hormone sensitive lipase will not help, perilipin phosphorylation is mandatory and required. Now, what happens when this hormone sensitive lipase is activated? There is release of fatty acid and triacylglycerol. Now, this fatty acid from adipocytes enters blood and circulated in albumin bound form. So, remember free fatty acid is circulated in through albumin bound form. Now, these fatty acids enters oxidation and produces uh, energy. What is the fate of glycerol? Now, glycerol in the stored triacyl glycerol, glycerol is the least important part actually they glycerol takes um, very low plays very low important role in producing energy. It is only 5 percent of energy producing biomolecule. So, what is the fate of this glycerol? Glycerol is basically phosphorylated to form glycerol 3 phosphate. Now, this glycerol 3 phosphate enters glycolysis. How? It is basically once again with the help of dehydrogenase, it forms dihydroxyacetone phosphate. Remember that is one uh, product important in glycolysis. Now, dihydroxyacetone phosphate is treated with another uh, glycolytic enzyme that is triose phosphate isomerase to produce glycerol dehyde 3 phosphate and you if you remember the glycolysis class that this glycerol 3 phosphate further enters glycolysis. So, glycerol can enter glycolysis and produces uh, and follows further reactionary steps. Now, let us move on to the oxidations of fatty acids. Now, fatty acid oxidations can be of different types based on the uh, which carbon is actually oxidized. Now, fatty acids are carboxylic acids containing long aliphatic chains. Now, this is a carboxylic acid having carboxyl group as acid group. Now, the naming of the carbon it is the part of chemistry you should know or you should remember actually that the first carbon adjacent to the carboxyl group in fatty acid is known as alpha carbon. The next one is known as beta carbon, then it goes on alpha, beta, gamma, delta likewise. Now, when alpha carbon is oxida oxidation in alpha carbon occurs that is alpha oxidation. Similarly, if there is oxidation of beta carbon that is beta oxidation. Now, what is omega carbon? Omega carbon is the farthest carbon from the carboxyl group. So, this is omega carbon. So, in case of omega oxidation, this carbon is oxidation oxidized. So, based on which carbon is oxidized, there is naming of the types of fatty acid oxidation beta, alpha, omega like that. Now, the commonest one in our body is beta oxidation of fatty acid. Now, what is beta oxidation? So, beta oxidation of fatty acid is basically oxi oxidation of, of the carbon which is positioned in beta region. So, there is oxidation of beta carbon as well as so there is oxidative removal remember beta oxidation is breaking down of fatty acid so there is oxidative removal of successive two carbon units so in each cycle there is removal of two carbon units in the form of acetyl coenzyme 
and that starts from the carboxyl end. So, from the carboxyl end means from the beta position and this process is known as beta oxidation as I told you already because there is oxidation of at the beta carbon position and there the splitting occurs. So, this is our beta oxidation. Now, for fatty acid oxidation one very important step is activation of fatty acid. Remember we discussed about activation of glucose by addition of UDP. Similarly, activation of fatty acid occurs via addition of coenzyme A molecule. Coenzyme A molecule basically is a complex of pantothenic acid and beta mercaptoethanolamine. Now, when this coenzyme A is added to fatty acid forms fatty acyl coenzyme A, this, this is the activated form of fatty acid and it occurs in the cytoplasm. So, what happens once again there is mobilization of stored fat triacylglycerol breakdown from adipocyte free fatty acid bound to albumin are circulated through the circulation enter cell enters in the cytoplasm in cytoplasm there is activation of fatty acid. Now, the important enzyme for activation of fatty acid is fatty acyl coenzyme A synthetase. Now, remember synthetase and synthase there are two types of enzymes in case of synthetase there is utilization of ATP. So, here you can see there is utilization of ATP. So, there is utilization of ATP. Now, fatty acyl coenzyme A synthetase based on the chain length of fatty acid there are different isomer like short chain fatty acid for short chain fatty acid there is short chain fatty acyl coenzyme A synthetase. Similarly, medium chain fatty acid there is medium chain fatty acyl coenzyme A synthetase and long chain fatty acids as well. Now, this enzyme is present on the outer surface of the mitochondrial membrane. Remember outer mitochondrial membrane this enzyme is attached to outer mitochondrial membrane. Now, this is a two step reaction activation is a two step reaction where an intermediate that is fatty acyl adenylate is formed and ATP hydrolysis occurs. It on ATP hydrolysis there is formation of AMP and pyrophosphate and that pyrophosphate is immediately hydrolyzed to produce inorganic phosphate. So, basically there are two high energy phosphate bonds are utilized. So, basically formation of AMP from ATP not ADP it is adenosyl monophosphate fine. So, now important thing is sometimes small chain fatty acid can be activated by thiophorase enzyme as well using succinyl coenzyme as the coenzyme A molecule donor. So, for succinyl coenzyme uh, for small chain fatty acid there can be succinyl coenzyme otherwise for other uh, short chain medium chain long chain fatty acid fatty acyl coenzyme synthetase enzyme is required. Now, after activation main beta oxidation occurs and the main beta oxidation related enzymes are located inside mitochondrial matrix, but remember activation has occurred in outside mitochondria in cytosol. Now, what will happen because fatty acids are not freely permeable to mitochondrial membrane. So, definitely what we need is a transporter, a transporter which is based on the protein or the molecule carnitine. Carnitine is beta hydroxy gamma trimethyl ammonium butyrate. Now, carnitine is here acting as a transporter for long chain fatty acids. Remember those fatty acids which are uh, the chain length is 12 carbon or shorter they can uh, they can uh, diffuse through the mitochondrial membrane and enter mitochondrial matrix, but for long chain fatty acids they are not freely permeable. So, they need carnitine transporter and that transport mechanism is known as carnitine shuttle. Now, let us see what how these carnitine shuttles actually occur. Now, uh, before that carnitine regarding carnitine few points you need to remember that is it is synthesized from the amino acid lysine and methionine in very important for the MCQs synthesized mostly in liver and also in kidney huge amount 
abundantly present in muscle. Uh, there is a variation of serum or tissue level during growth or pregnancy when uh, high amount of carnitine is required. So, the circulatory carnitine is also high or in case of aging process where the synthesizing capability of cell is low. So, there is low serum level of carnitine. Remember whenever there is carnitine deficiency, bones are the most important part which are affected during physiological uh, low carnitine level. So, there is osteoporosis in case of elderly subject due, uh, when there is carnitine deficiency. So, this is our carnitine shuttle. Carnitine shuttle is important for remember for carrying or transporting long chain fatty acid from outside mitochondria to inside mitochondria. Now, the first step is uh, formation of acyl carnitine. So, fatty acid activated fatty acid and carnitine forms a complex that is acyl carnitine with the help of the enzyme CAT1 carnitine acyl transferase 1. So, you can see here the fatty acid and coenzyme A forms the activated fatty acid which joins with carnitine to form this acyl carnitine complex. Now, it is formed in the outer mitochondrial membrane. From outer mitochondrial membrane it can this acyl carnitine complex can diffuse through intermembranous space and comes outside the inner mitochondrial membrane. Now, inner mitochondrial membrane is not permeable. So, what is required? One transporter that is known as translocase. Now, this translocase, this is our translocase, this is our translocase fine. Now, this translocase what it does? It transfers the acyl carnitine complex from intermembrane space to the mitochondrial matrix. So, there is transfer of uh, acyl carnitine inside my, mitochondria. Now, the next step is definitely reformation of fatty acyl coenzyme A. So, there is fatty acyl coenzyme A reformed by another enzyme that is carnitine acyl transferase 2 cat 2 and what happens to the carnitine? Carnitine goes back to the cytosolic surface via the translocase enzyme. So, once again what we can see that there is formation of acyl carnitine with the help of the enzyme cat 1. This acyl carnitine is transported inside mitochondrial matrix via translocase. There is reformation of acyl coenzyme A and carnitine transfers back to the mitochondrial uh, through the mitochondrial uh, intermembrane space to outer mitochondrial membrane. So, now activated fatty acid is inside the mitochondria. Now, what happens? There are the ma main beta oxidation pathway consists of four enzyme catalyzed reaction. Those are dehydrogenation, hydration, again dehydrogenation and finally, there is thiolytic cleavage or splitting and that split compound is released as 2 carbon product acetyl coenzyme A. The other product is a another fatty acyl coenzyme A which is 2 carbon less than the previous one because 2 carbon compound is released as acetyl coenzyme A that substrate once again follow these four steps of reaction and this cycle goes on till there is till the final product is either 2 or 3 carbon compound. So, this is how beta oxidation occurs. Now, let us see step by step. So, as I told you there is dehydrogenation, hydration, again dehydrogenation and finally, thiolytic cleavage and these are the important enzyme, these are the enzymes related to the step that is FAD link dehydrogenase hydratase, then another dehydrogenase which is NAD link dehydrogenase and finally, there is thiolase for cleavage. Now, let us discuss one by one, FAD linked dehydrogenase is basically what it is, what it doing? It is causing dehydrogenation and introduction of one double bond between the alpha and beta carbon. 
So, there is introduction of one double bond and remember this double bond is of trans variety. So, there is production of trans delta 2 enoyl coenzyme A. The product is having trans bond. Remember all the fatty acids which are uh, the endogenous fatty acids or dietary fatty acids those are mostly cis configuration, but this, this product is trans configuration and that has some importance we will discuss later. Now, this enzyme acyl coenzyme A dehydrogenase it is one FAD linked enzyme and has multiple isoform based on the chain length. So, for very long chain fatty acid that is very long chain acyl coenzyme A dehydrogenase VLCAD similarly MCAD medium chain acyl dehydrogenase and short chain for short chain fatty acid short chain acyl dehydrogenase. Now, the electron the dehydrogenase is causing electron transfer electron is taken up by the FAD of the en attached enzyme. So, basically the what is formed is a reduced enzyme and that reduced enzyme which is attached to now after dehydrogenation which is attached to FADH2 are is immediately oxidized via transferring this electron to uh, electron transport chain of mitochondria and the electron carrier is electron transport factor or ETF. So, this is one type of electron carrier which is entering uh, which is carrying electron to the electron transport chain of mitochondria. Next is hydration by hydratase. Now, this enzyme hydratase is specific for the trans bond. So, trans bond is important for uh, specification of hydratase. Now, what is formed after the addition of uh, one molecule of water that is beta hydroxy acyl coenzyme A which is L stereo isomer and now L stereo isomer is acted upon by this enzyme NAD dependent dehydrogenase. So, once again NAD dependent dehydrogenase actually specific for the L isomer of beta hydroxy acyl coenzyme A. So, finally, what is formed is beta keto acyl coenzyme A. So, another electron is trans, uh, transferred to NAD and forms NADH. Once again, this NADH enters electron transport chain of mitochondria. And the last one is thiolytic cleavage with the enzyme acyl transferase, acyl coenzyme A acyl transferase. Here it is acetyl transferase, also known as thiolase. What is formed is a two carbon short fatty acyl coenzyme A than the previous one. So, we started with palmitic acid which is a 16 carbon long compound and here what is the product C14 that is myristoyl coenzyme A and released product is acetyl coenzyme A. So, the two carbon unit which is released is acetyl coenzyme A via thiolytic cleavage. So, these are the four sequential reaction which constantly occurs till all the products are either acetyl coenzyme A and or some or one 3 carbon compound that is propionyl coenzyme A. Now, remember based on the chain length of fatty acids, the last three reaction can be done by two different sets of enzyme. How? In those fatty acids which are having long 12 or longer carbon chain, they are treated by multi enzyme complex which contains these 3 enzymes. Now, that multi enzyme complex is known as trifunctional protein TFP, trifunctional protein. Now, trifunctional protein is a hetero octamer which is having 8 subunit amongst them 4 are alpha, 4 are beta. So, alpha 4, beta 4 subunit. Now, each alpha subunit contains these two enzyme activity hydratase and NAD dependent dehydrogenase and the beta subunit contains thiolase activity. Now, what is the importance of mul having multi enzyme complex? Now, in case of all the multi enzyme complex remember uh, when all the enzymes are stuck together or complex together what happens once uh, product is will be utilized as substrate of another enzyme. Now, 
there will be very less diffusion while transferring those substrate from one enzyme to another. So, there will be efficient substrate channeling when there is a multi enzyme complex. Now, while getting treated by this TFP multi enzyme complex, the chain lengths get shorter when it is shorter than 12 carbon compound, it is treated by another set of enzyme that is a soluble enzyme complex which consists all the four enzyme. So, this is the importance of having multi enzyme complex in beta oxidation of fatty acid. So, remember what has been the product for uh, fatty uh, first cycle of beta oxidation that is fatty acyl coenzyme A which is having a uh, chain length 2 carbon shorter than the substrate and one acetyl coenzyme A is released. Now, what happens this substrate once again enters dehydrogenation, hydration, again dehydrogenation, again thiolytic cleavage. So, there is release of another molecule of 2 carbon acetyl coenzyme A and again the substrate enters this cycle till all the products are broken down to either 2 carbon or 3 carbon compound. So, that is called beta oxidation cycle. So, let us discuss palmitic acid for case of for in case of palmitic acid what will happen palmitic acid is, is a 16 carbon compound. So, what will happen after one cycle there will be release of acetyl one molecule of coen, uh, acetyl coenzyme A forming C 14 which is known as myristoyl coenzyme A 14 carbon long. Second cycle there will be release of another molecule of acetyl coenzyme A 12 carbon long lauryl carb, uh, coenzyme A is formed. Similarly, there is third cycle C 10, fourth cycle C 8, fifth cycle C 6, sixth cycle C 4 and finally, this is our seventh cycle where actually 2 acetyl coenzyme A from C 4, 2 acetyl coenzyme A are released. So, what will be there? So, there will be 7 cycles of beta oxidation in case of palmitic acid and 8 molecules of acetyl coenzyme A production. So, what we have learned from this session, these are the key points that the stored triacylglycerol is mobilized on requirement via enzyme hormone sensitive lipase from adipose tissue. Uh, the mobilized fat is activated by fatty acyl coenzyme A mobilized fat in the form of free fatty acid is activated by fatty acyl coenzyme A synthetase. Uh, short chain and medium chain fatty acid can enter inside mitochondrial matrix freely whereas, uh, for long chain fatty acid transporter is needed and that transporter is carnitine shuttle. Finally, there is beta oxidation, beta oxidation follows 4 sets of sequential reaction of dehydrogenation, hydration, again dehydrogenation and thiolytic splitting which gives of sequential release of acetyl 2 carbon acetyl coenzyme A. So, these are the take home messages, these are my references and uh, see you in the next class of oxidation of fatty acid.